okay? If you have a purely horizontal vector, purely horizontal vector, what is its x component? Let's say it's some force. What's its x component? Whatever f, whatever f is, is your x component. What's your y component? Somebody said it. Zero. Your y component is zero. Okay, if you have a purely vertical vector, what's its x component? Zero. And its y component is? All right. So then if you have a vector off at an angle, remember how to find the x component? Cosine. Good. F cosine theta and its y component is f sine theta. Good. Alright, so if we have two vectors that are going off in the same direction like force 1 and force 2, what do we do with those two forces in order to get the net force? they're in the same direction, what do we do? Add them. So we're going to take F1 and we're going to add to it F2. That's easy enough. Let's say we have two forces that are in opposite directions. Well, they could cancel each other out. What would be true if they canceled each other out? Yeah, the net force is equal to zero. F1 would equal F2, which happens tomorrow. But right now, it, it doesn't so much. Let's, let's make F2 a little bit longer than F1. So how are we going to find the net force now? Because they're not equal. They don't totally cancel each other out. We subtract. Which one goes first? Okay, we're going to take our bigger and subtract our smaller. So it's the bigger one minus the smaller one. And then the direction of this force is in the direction of which force? The bigger one. So the bigger force gives us the direction. Right now, if we have, let's say we have three vectors like this. So here's F1, here's F2, and here's F3. Okay, now we're not on the same line. We're not just going to straight add and subtract them. Do you remember what we had to use to add vectors that were in, at an angle to each other? Components. We had to use their x and y components. So we make the xy chart. Make your xy chart. And then F1, what would its x component be? Look what you wrote to begin with. Just F1, what would its Y component be? Zero, because remember this one's purely horizontal. That one's purely horizontal. F2 now, F2 is a little trickier. What are we going to do for F2? We know its force, we know its angle. That's where we have to split it up into its cosines and sines. So this is going to be F2 cos theta. This one's going to be F2 sine theta. Guess what we went over before. And then F3, what are we going to do? What's its X component? Zero. And its Y component is F3. So then we're going to take these guys, we're going to add them together, and we're going to get the X and Y components for the net force. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have the x component and we're going to have the y component. Actually our y here would go down so let's erase that and make it go down. Why would our y here go down? Which directions are our y's in, this, in our diagram? Down. down. So our y is going to go down and so our net force 
is down and to the right. So this is our net force. How are we going to find that? Here's a hint. What do we use? Pythagorean theorem. Yes. Cause All right, here's our angle theta. How are we going to find our angle How are we going to find the angle? Which trig function do we use to find the angle? Tangent. So the inverse tangent of your y over your x gives you theta. Okay, so when you go to do six, 16b, okay, it's all on a number line. You have q1. You have Q2, and you have Q3. Q1 is a positive 6 microcoulombs. Q2 is a positive 1.5 microcoulombs. And Q3 is a negative 2 microcoulombs. And this one's at zero centimeters, this one's at three centimeters, and this one's at five centimeters. What do you need to make sure you do? Convert, okay? Convert this and convert. Make sure you convert both. What's the equation we use for force? We used it the, yesterday. F equals K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And what's K? 9 times 10 to the 9. Okay, for the first part, you're only going to look at what's happening to Q1. Only what's happening to Q1. So you look at Q1, Q1's positive, and Q2 is positive. So the force between 1 and 2 between 1 and 2. Okay, the force between 1 and 2, they're both positive, so what do they do? Attract or repel? They repel. Like charges repel, opposites attract. So which way is 2 going to make 1 go? Is it going to make it go to the left or to the right? Okay, so the force between 1 and 2 is going to be off to the left. And then you would plug 1 and 2 into the KQ1, Q2 over R squared, get that answer. So you need to calculate this. You need to calculate that. That's why this is tedious, not hard. Okay, don't do it yet, because I'm just outlining right now. Okay, the force between 1 and 3. Okay, 1 is positive, 3 is negative, so they're going to attract or repel? They're going to attract, so 3 is going to pull 1 to the right. So the force between 1 and 3 is to the right, and you need to calculate this. All right, so we have two forces in opposite directions. What do we do when our forces are in opposite directions? We're going to take these two forces and we're going to subtract. Now, you notice yesterday when we were doing 16A that all my answers on haiku were positive, And then I had to the right, to the left as the direction. Same thing. When you go to do the K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, don't put the signs in the equation. Don't put the signs in the equation because positive and negative physics just tells us direction. We've already accounted for the direction. We've already accounted for the direction here and here. We've already said this one's going this way, this one's going this way. So we don't have to go and put the positives and negatives in there. So just leave all your forces positive because you already know what direction they're in. You've drawn them out right here. You've drawn out, there's the force between 1 and 2. There's a force between 1 and 3. So you have two positive numbers and then you're going to subtract them. And then your net force is going to be in which direction? 
is going to be in the direction of the bigger one. Now you may think that you're done with number one. You are not. Okay, and that's where it becomes tedious, not hard. Okay, you think you're done. But the question says, calculate the magnitude and direction of electrical force on each of the three points. Each of the three points. So you have to do it again for Q2, and you have to do it again for Q3. So let's look at what like really quick. So now what we're going to do is we're going to isolate Q2. Okay? One and two are both positive. So what's one going to do to two? Push it to the... It's going to push... So the force between one and two is going to go off to the right this time. Equal and opposite. That's all the Newton's third law stuff. Okay, so the force on number two now goes to the right. Okay, and then we look at what's going on between two and three. Okay, that was between one and two. What, what are two and three doing to each other? They're attracting each other, so they're going to go towards each other or away from each other? Towards each other. So force between two and three is going to go towards number three. Okay, you've already calculated this. You already calculated it before. You need to calculate this. Using your K1, K2, or K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And then they're in the same direction, so what are you going to do the forces after you calculate them? Add them. Okay, again, your forces are going to be positive because you are not putting your signs into your calculator. Do not put the positives and negatives into your calculator. Why We add them because they're in the same direction. That's where we started. Okay, so if they're in opposite directions, you subtract. If they're in the same direction, you add them. Okay, and then when you go to do number two... Number two requires that you use the XY chart. I'm not going to help you. I mean, yeah, I'll come around and help you with that. But I'm not going to set that up globally for everybody as you kind of get to that and you need help, come ask me for help, okay?